लाइट ऑफ दी भागवत चैप्टर सेवन फ्रॉम सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन टेक्स्ट सेवन द स्मॉल रिविलेट्स दैट ऑलमोस्ट ड्राइव अप ड्यूरिंग द मंथ्स ऑफ मे एंड जून नाउ बिगिन टू ओवरफ्लो देयर बैंक्स लाइक अप स्टार्ट दैट सडनली ओवरफ्लो द लिमिट्स ऑफ एक्सपेंडिचर वन शुड लर्न ग्रेविटी फ्रॉम द सी एंड द रिविलेट The sea is always within its limits in spite of the many rivers pouring water into it Similarly one should properly use the assets of life and not squander them for purposes that have no permanent value Uncontrolled sensuous persons play with the assets of the body and accumulate wealth but the strength of the body should be used for self realization not for sense gratification human beings have two kinds of temperament some are introspective and the others are extravagant those who are extravagant are enamored of the external features of phenomenal beauty and have no insight into the whole manifestation they are practically asleep to introspection and thus they are unable to derive any permanent value from the assets of the human form of body but one who has developed introspection is as great as the sea while those who are extravagant are calm and quiet in sleep such great persons use the full advantage of the human form of life although the animal propensities of the body should be minimized those who are extravagant temporarily overflow in material enjoyment nonetheless as soon as the rainy season of life is over they become as dry as dry river beds life is meant for the right cause or sat that which exists for all time in the material world nothing is sat or eternal but the bad bargain of the material world can be used for the best purpose the mind dedicated to extravagance is a bad bargain but one can make the best use of the mind by introspection light of the bhagavata chapter 8 material existence a passing phantasmagoria text 8 the colorful greenery of the newly grown grass the seasonal flowers the frogs umbrellas the butterflies and the other variegatedness of the rainy season perfectly represent a well to do family absorbed in vanity over their personal assets a rich man displays his opulence in various colorful ways he has a good residential bungalow with sufficient property and a well trimmed garden the bungalow is decorated with up to date furniture and carpets there are motor cars with dazzling polish and a radio set receiving and broadcasting colorful news and melodious songs all these captivate their proprietor as though he were in a dreamland of his own creation when the same man was as dry as fallow land and had none of these opulences he was plain in behavior but since obtaining all these material means of enjoyment he has forgotten the principle that everything in the world comes and goes away like the changing seasons the beautiful red fort and the taj mahal were built by shah jahan who left the place long ago and many others have also come and gone in the same place like seasonal flowers material assets are like seasonal flowers only either the flowers wither or the gardener himself leaves this is the law of nature 
therefore if we want permanent life knowledge and bliss we must seek them somewhere else not in the changeable temporary rainy season which is flooded with so many varieties of pleasing sights that vanish when the season ends material manifestations of things are but shadowy representations of reality they are compared to mirages in the desert in the desert there is no water but the foolish deer runs after illusory water in the desert to quench his thirsty heart water is not unreal but the place where we see it is misleading the advancement of materialistic civilization is just like a mirage in the desert the deer runs after water in the desert with full speed and the illusion of water moves ahead at the same speed as the foolish deer water is not false but we must not seek it in the desert a living entity by his past experience remembers the real happiness of his original spiritual existence but since he has forgotten himself he seeks spiritual or permanent happiness in matter although this is impossible to achieve light of the bhagavata chapter 9 god's gifted profession agriculture and cow protection text 9 a picturesque scene of green paddy fields enlivens the heart of the poor agriculturalist but it brings gloom to the face of the capitalist who lives by exploiting the poor farmers with good rains the farmers business in agriculture flourishes Agriculture is the noblest profession it makes society happy wealthy healthy honest and spiritually advanced for a better life after death the vaishya community or the mercantile class of men take to this profession in bhagavad gita the vaishyas are described as the natural agriculturalists the protectors of cows and the general traders When Lord Shri Krishna incarnated himself at Vrindavan he took pleasure in becoming a beloved son of such a Vaishya family Nanda Maharaj was a big protector of cows and Lord Shri Krishna as the most beloved son of Nanda Maharaj used to tend his father's animals in the neighboring forest by his personal example lord krishna wanted to teach us the value of protecting cows nand maharaj is said to have possessed 900000 cows and at the time of lord shri krishna about 500 years ago the tract of land known as vrindavan was flooded with milk and butter therefore god's gifted professions for mankind are agriculture and cow protection trade is meant only for transporting surplus produce to places where the produce is scanty but when traders become too greedy and materialistic they take to large scale commerce and industry and allure the poor agriculturalist to unsanitary industrial towns with a false hope of earning more money the industrialist and the capitalist do not want the farmer to remain at home satisfied with his agricultural produce when the farmers are satisfied by a luxuriant growth of food grains the capitalist becomes gloomy at heart but the real fact is that humanity must depend on agriculture and subsist on agricultural produce no one can produce rice and wheat in big iron factories the industrialist goes to the villagers to purchase the food grains he is unable to produce in his factory the poor agriculturalist takes advances from the capitalist and sells his produce at lower price 
hence when food grains are produced abundantly the farmers become financially stronger and thus the capitalist becomes morose at being unable to exploit them light of the bhagavata chapter 10 transcendental refreshment through service to god text 10 just as a living being attains a transcendentally attractive form by rendering service to lord hari similarly all the inhabitants of the land and the water assume beautiful forms by taking advantage of the newly fallen water we have practical experience of this with our students in the international society for krishna consciousness before becoming students they were dirty looking although they had naturally beautiful personal features but due to having no information of krishna consciousness they appeared very dirty and wretched since they have taken to krishna consciousness their health has improved and by following the rules and regulations their bodily luster has increased when they are dressed with saffron colored cloth with tilak on their foreheads and beads in their hands and on their necks they look exactly as if they come directly from vaikuntha the residents of the water are the fish frogs and so on and the residents of the land are the cows deer and so on by constantly drinking and taking bath in the fresh rain water of the rainy season the tired and parched animals are refreshed and their complexions become brilliant as their health is invigorated by the arrival of new rain water the lakes ponds and rivers are cleansed and invigorated by the downpour of new rain water and thus become most beautiful Similarly a devotee of the supreme lord who takes advantage of the beautiful and invigorating downpour of the transcendental descriptions of god found in vedic literature finds his spiritual consciousness invigorated and refreshed in this way his spiritualized body becomes very beautiful light of the bhagavata Chapter 11 Taking shelter of the Lord's representative Text 11 In the rainy season when the rivers swell and rush to the ocean and as the wind blows the waves about the ocean appears to be agitated similarly if a person engaged in the mystic yoga process is not very advanced in spiritual life he can be affected by the modes of nature and thus will be agitated by the sex impulse a person fixed in spiritual knowledge will not be attracted by the allurement of material nature in the form of beautiful women and the sex pleasure enjoyed in their association one however who is still immature in the cultivation of spiritual knowledge may be attracted at any moment by the illusion of temporary happiness just as the ocean is agitated by the rushing rivers and blowing wind that occur during the rainy season it is therefore very important to fix oneself at the lotus feet of a bona fide spiritual master who is a representative of god so that one will not be carried away by sex agitation light of the bhagavata chapter 12 devotees undisturbed even by great misfortune text 12 the mountains although being struck by torrents of rain during the rainy season are not shaken just as those whose hearts are dedicated to the transcendental personality of godhead are never disturbed even when harassed by great misfortune 
because a person who is spiritually advanced accepts any adverse condition of life as the mercy of the lord he is completely eligible to enter into the spiritual kingdom even though a person takes to the devotional service of the supreme lord he may sometimes become diseased impoverished or disappointed by life's events a true devotee of the lord always considers these sufferings to be due to past sinful activities and thus without becoming disturbed he patiently awaits the mercy of the supreme lord such devotees are compared to high mountains which are never agitated in any way even when struck by powerful torrents of rain in the rainy season rather such devotees remain humble in spiritual enlightenment free from pride and envy they easily gain the mercy of the lord and go back home back to godhead